agriculture is our biggest and basically the most important industry. Cities are only branches of the tree of national life whose roots reach deep into the earth. We all rise or fall with the farmer. Bernard Baruch Agriculture was born in one place and brought a new way of life. That way of life did not stay in one place, but spread and grew. That sedentary way of life led us to today's life, and this is how. In the area of the Fertile Crescent, the local transition to agriculture began to grow plants, then domesticated certain animal species. While in other parts of the world this knowledge about agriculture and technology comes from somewhere else. That's why these changes in the Middle East are happening relatively slowly. People don't cross one morning and start raising grain and sheep and stop hunting, quite the opposite. It lasts for several thousand years until little by little these domestic sources of food become more and more important. In the beginning, maybe they contribute one-tenth of what they will eat after several centuries or millennia. Domestic sheep begin to contribute more to the diet than wild animals, and then, after four, five thousand years, almost everything you eat comes from these domestic species, while in other areas the situation is significantly different, and this actually tells us clearly that agriculture and animal husbandry is something that comes almost from outside, probably at least partly through the migration of people. On many sites, there is a situation where you have an obvious hunter-gatherer tradition present on that site, who almost always hunt local game, some kind of deer, wild boar, chamois and collect some kind of far seeds. And then almost overnight, you have 95% domestic goats and sheep, and traces of domesticated plants, so, it is a radical change in lifestyle. Hunters and gatherers do not carry much luggage. They do not have many weapons and tools. In Europe, after the end of the Great Ice Age, the main tools are microliths, small, standardized pieces of stone, which have been caught in such a way that their sides are sharp. Complex tools are made from these microliths. A piece of sharp stone, usually flint or chert, is pressed into a handle made of wood or bone, and thus a tool for cutting and chopping is obtained. While farmers need a lot more things for their daily life. But there are rare exceptions to this rule. There are several hunter-gatherer cultures in Asia that lived mostly in one place. Even the first ceramics were created in these communities. One of these exceptions is the Yomo culture. This culture rose on the Japanese islands around 14,000 BC and lasted until around 300 AD. The interesting thing about that culture is that they are hunter-gatherers who live in one place. The Joman people lived mostly in one place. They made one of the earliest ceramics used for cooking mollusks and preparing plant foods. On the Asian continent, equally early pottery production has been found in hunter-gatherer sites, which stretch from South China to Eastern Russia. In the Xi'an Ren Cave in Jiangxi Province, there is a crude pottery made of clay slabs and dating back to 20,000 BC. This site shows the relationship between ceramics and edible shells and crustaceans, whose meat can be easily obtained if they are heated. Until the appearance of ceramics, Shells of mollusks were broken. With the discovery of the first ceramic vessels, intact armor is also found. The secret of those hunter-gatherers who live in one place, who own ceramic vessels, is that they live in tropical and subtropical areas where there is an abundance of food, especially that which comes from the sea and fresh waters. In some areas of Asia, there were so many fish shells and crabs that hunters and gatherers did not have to move from one place to feed themselves. The first ceramics were created in these communities, 
but there were few such areas. Hunters and gatherers mostly cruised around the region to get food. Because the field demands attention, and they must be with their fields or their herds. While the herds can walk around a bit in some pastures, but again they limit your movement, which is probably seasonal, than it is in a smaller area, and especially if they grow cereals, which was the foundation in those early days, then that's what keeps them in one place. This means that they could start accumulating heavy and clumsy objects, which means that material culture becomes more massive because hunters and gatherers have no use for heavy ceramics that they have to constantly carry with them over different and difficult terrains. If you are a farmer, then that doesn't bother you. And on the other hand, the pot is a very convenient container in which you can store your products, liquid, or whatever you need. This is the time when architecture begins to be seen much more in archaeological structures because these houses are permanently inhabited or inhabited for a large part of the year. In contrast to the early shelters, which were also built, people were not too stupid before to know how to build a house, they also built, but they only needed temporary shelter. Farming developed around the same time, in several places in the world, after the end of the last ice age and global warming, in the area of the Fertile Crescent, in West Asia, in East Asia, in the basin of large rivers, in Papua New Guinea, in Sol Africa, in Central and South America, people began to domesticate plants and animals, and they began to live exclusively from farming and animal breeding, such a way of life changed the material culture of these people. From these centers, agriculture began to spread throughout the world. In the book After the Ice, Stephen Mithen describes the expansion of agriculture in this way. By 6000 BC, Mesolithic people in Northern Europe began to listen to stories from visitors around the hearth, about new people in the East about people who lived in large wooden houses and watched over game. They soon learned that their Mesolithic neighbors used polished stone axes, shaped clay cooking vessels, and drove animals into herds. When farming villages came near them, Mesolithic eyes looked from the forest with a mixture of fear, wonder and disgust at the long wooden houses, at the domesticated cattle and at the germinating crop. It is very important to be aware of the fact that these settlers played an active role in those beginnings of agriculture. It is a time far before states. It is a time far before any large political communities. Those people who come probably come in small groups, several families, relatively organized. The population density is low, but it is not an empty space. Different things happen in different places. On the one hand, these farmers probably often enter areas that are not very interesting to hunter-gatherers because these are two completely different ways of life and good hunting grounds are often not good agricultural lands and vice versa. So often there may not even be any great need for a conflict. Generally speaking, there is not much indication that the contact was violent we don't find a lot of weapons. We don't very often find some kind of graves or cemeteries where people who apparently ended their lives by a violent death. So, at the time, it doesn't really seem like it's an extremely conflicted situation. Agriculture spread slowly at that time. People in Western Europe still lived as hunter-gatherers. At that time, people were already engaged in agriculture in the Fertile Crescent. In an archaeological site in the Seine River Valley, in northern France, a hunter-gatherer settlement was found that indicated that it was inhabited around 8000 BC, and that people lived there from summer to winter, whose main source of food was deer meat. 
but fish bones and eggshells were also found at the site. As the remains of foundations and stakes driven into the ground were not found, it is believed that people lived in portable tents, which consisted of wooden poles and animal skins. It is believed that deer hunters lived seasonally in that place. They would hunt their game there, collect the meat and then go from that place to another. In the book After the Ice, Stephen Mithen estimates that five families lived in that place, each of which had its own hearth. This is how Mithen describes the activity of the hunters in that place after catching the game. The corpse was cut open, legs, ribs, together with kidneys and liver, are separated and placed on the skin, the heart, Lungs and bronchial tubes were removed as one unit and separated. The heart is placed on the meat. The rest is placed with the entrails. As the penultimate act, the cheek and the severed head are separated to reveal the root of the tongue. It is removed with one cut. At the end, the horns are separated and placed, like a crown, on a pile of meat and organs. Several larger pieces of meat are taken a few meters away to a group of women who will separate the pieces of meat. As the butchers work on the deer, they throw the bones, which do not have enough marrow, over their shoulders, leaving short pieces of vertebrae, bones from the lower legs and feet, and parts of the ribs on the ground. When the work is finished, it is time to rest, during which pieces of meat, kidneys and liver are roasted on the fire. Then the sleds are loaded with deer meat. Earth is thrown over the ashes and the hunters leave. After a few minutes, the wolves come to eat the remains. These hunters bring their catch to the camp, where they stay as long as there are deer. With the arrival of winter, the hunters go to the south to their winter camp. Agriculture spread slowly in the interior of Europe. While people enjoyed a sedentary lifestyle in one part of Europe, people in another lived like their ancestors 10,000 or 100,000 years ago. Agriculture spread slowly the Greek islands in the Aegean Sea, then to the Greek mainland and further to the Balkans. And then the speed of expansion of agriculture changed. Some interesting things are happening. It is interesting to see the trend of the speed with which agriculture is expanding from that area. It actually spread very slowly in the first 4,000 to 5,000 years. Taking that in around 11,000 years before Christ, you have the first domesticates in the Fertile Crescent. And they come to Europe namely in Greece, somewhere around 7,000 years before Christ, so it took about 4,500 years for this to happen. While those 1,000 or 1,500 kilometers of space were crossed, so the expansion was very slow there. Obviously, there was no great need for this to happen. People were still happy with hunting and gathering. There are already farmers there at the entrance to Europe, and the Mediterranean, it is still spreading very slowly, that somewhere around 5,800 years before Christ, agriculture reaches a great expansion that then covers the entire Mediterranean and Europe in just 200 years. If we compare the speed of expansion, the speed of expansion of agriculture after 6,000 or 6,100 years before Christ, it accelerates 10 times faster. The reason for this is assumed. It is believed that a good part of the changes in the lives of our ancestors results from climate change. The end of the Ice Age brought agriculture. It seems that the rapid expansion of agriculture is also a consequence of climate change. The Ice Age more or less ended 10,000 years ago, but not all the ice caps melted completely. 
the ice cap over North America remained partially preserved. For the longest time, it is believed that this ice cap led to climate change in the world. The ice cap melted inside itself and thus created a huge lake of very cold and sweet water. And that lake was called Agassiz. That lake grew to such a size that a huge dam of ice held the water inside that lake. It simply gave way under the pressure of the water and burst. It was definitely a cataclysmic phenomenon that led to climate change because the Agassiz Lake spilled into the Atlantic Ocean around 6200 BC. That huge amount of fresh and cold water probably led to a change in the Gulf Stream. Because of this, the entire climate was disturbed. The consequences for Europe and the Old World is that the climate probably changed and led to a change in people's way of life because that event coincides with the accelerated development of agriculture. The climate has changed significantly there, and this may have been the reason for the rapid expansion of agriculture.